She keeps it straight. She keeps it confident. Easy peasy. And into the last. Fantastic clear round for her. And boy, is that going to put the pressure on. Wendy Schaefer's second win at the Australian International three-day event in Adelaide last November confirmed that once again she's on track to represent Australia, now with the 2012 London Olympics firmly in her sights. She's acknowledged around the world as one of Australia's toughest and most successful equestrian competitors. And when she's not competing around the globe, you'll find Wendy at home at Handor. Wendy, the youngest equestrian Olympic gold medalist or female in history. That is quite an accolade. Oh, look, it seems a lifetime ago now, Lady, but look, it was a very special time. I was there with my um, horse that I had been with um, since I was 11 years old, went to Pony Club with, and um, we'd obviously come through the senior ranks and uh, competing at a much higher level. We were certainly ready uh, to go to the Olympics and do well there, but it was a surprise to me to, to be sort of right up the top so of the tree. So Atlanta in 1996, and it's been a glorious journey, you'd have to say, ever since. You've been incredibly successful. Oh, look, it, it seems like it's for life is full of highs and lows, so there's certainly been some really high points and winning the Australian three-day event championships yeah. um, on my sort of home-produced Sundance. It was very exciting. Uh, but look, it's, yeah, life's a roller coaster. I think it's all about ups and downs, but really we've just got to carry on and, and move forward to the next sort of big thing we're looking at. And for me, that's London Olympics. Did you just start riding as a, as a child and keep going? Oh, look, I suppose, I suppose so, really. I mean, I grew up on a farm. My mum was competing in the, in the eventing sport. Um, she was, you know, ultimately good enough to get to ride at the World uh, Three-Day Event Championships in Gawler. And there I watched not only my mum compete, um, but also a, a, a British rider become the, the world champion and the best in the world, which was extremely inspiring for me. And I think what is also really interesting is that Australia and Australian riders perform exceptionally well. And when you look at the talent pool that we've got here in South Australia, yourself, Megan Jones, Jones and Jill Rolton. What do you think? Is there something in the water in South Australia? <laughs> you could ask that question because we certainly to have you know two gold or double gold medalists and Jill, myself a gold and Megan a silver. That's in you know, a huge amount of um, you know medals. I suppose, and as you say, a fairly small group of people doing it. I'm always amazed when I speak to you know elite athletes. So many of us aspire to do things, but get distracted along the way. What is the the qualities that you think make somebody able to stick at something to the level of winning a gold medal? I think it's absolute belief, isn't it? And I think that's in some ways it was easier as a younger person when there hadn't been as many sort of things that had gone pear-shaped. And for me, uh, running up to Atlanta, I had a broken leg as well, so that was that was sort of a crazy experience. And perhaps I would be more sort of, um, should we say, held back by that now. Whereas at the time, it was I had this youthful, dogmatic sort of ignorance. Yeah, I know I've got a broken leg, but I'm riding in Atlanta anyway, and I have to make sure my horse gets a chance to shine and show you how good he is. So yeah, I was just I was just going. I suppose for people like me who watch people like you perform, you almost make it look too easy, that you're so good at what you do. And I wonder whether people appreciate because it, it is an incredibly dangerous sport when those things go wrong. Oh, look, it can be, it can be, and that's a, the difficult part about the, the cross-country phase, I suppose, too, that we're very much always looking to make it safer so that even when things do go wrong, we still sort of survive and um, we're able to carry on through another day. But, look, I suppose it's like anything. You watch the best um, athletes or best people in their field do things and it, and it looks easy, they talk easy, perhaps, or it just, you yeah, know, the action's all sort of... A, a, a fluent and so forth so that's always the goal and the aim it's not yeah. always as, as good as it um, can be but I suppose we're never never short of improving and always wanting to step on further. So Wendy when you're not riding you're qualified as an equine physiotherapist tell me about that what do you do? <laughs> well it's more what I have done and I'm not actually currently practicing right now so I'm focusing on my riding career yeah. but um, I did a, a master's in animal physiotherapy so that's been really useful uh, for my riding and general knowledge but but right now I suppose to pursue a business in setting up an equine physio I just um, at this point I've you know, been focusing on the competition career and that's a later goal I suppose. Well London is still some way off and I know you're in training now. Yes. Is there a possibility of another gold medal in the cupboard? Oh look we'd love to, love to think that was possible and anything's possible I suppose it's just striving for that hard enough and, and doing the absolute best I can to be there and, and be in a team that can um, bring home the gold for Australia again. So you've achieved what most of us only dream about is winning uh, Olympic gold. What do you say to a, you know, a little kid that comes up mm -hmm. looking for an autograph you know, how do you inspire them to stick with their dream? It's absolutely believe in yourself and then believe in the dream and then you've just got to want it enough. It's just the most important thing in your life. And you can make it happen. Absolutely.